good afternoon. My name is Annie Forsheimer, and I was a US diplomat for 30 years serving all over the world. I'm now coordinating One Shared World's effort to get the leaders of the group of 20, the G20, to commit to what Jamie refers to as a new global operating system. In other words, in a very specific way, they should commit to a plan to ensure safe access to drinking water, basic sanitation and hygiene, and essential pandemic preparedness, or what we are calling wash pap, to all people by 2030. It's consistent with the sustainable development goals, but what's different is that it's urgent. Our panel will help us understand the urgency of this request and give ideas about what all of us can do. We're joined by Jack Sim, the founder and CEO of the World Toilet Foundation, which promotes health, dignity, and well being for all through sustainable sanitation. He's in Singapore where it's very late at night. And we're joined by Saran Kaba Jones, founder and CEO of Face Africa, working to bring clean water, sanitation, and hygiene programs to remote communities in Sub Saharan Africa. We have a short time for a big topic. I would like both of you, please, uh, first of all, welcome. And I would like both of you, please, to tell me how would fixing the water, sanitation, and hygiene sector, how is it vital to solving the COVID-19 problems and preventing future pandemics? Uh, Saran, would you please start? Thanks, Annie. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I think this is a very important topic because the COVID-19 crisis has highlighted the urgency and the need to address water sanitation and hygiene issues around the world. Um, because now more than ever, access to safe water, sanitation, and hygiene is critical to our global community, as we're seeing in light of the coronavirus outbreak. We've seen that one of the most important contributions we can make to slow down transmission of COVID-19 and keep ourselves and our community safe is to wash and sanitize our hands. This was also the case during the 2014 Ebola crisis in West Africa, where my organization, Face Africa, was actively working to stop the spread of the, the disease in Liberia through community-based education and distribution of water filters and hygiene kits. Um, through those efforts, we were able to save tens of thousands of lives through these community-based responses. And we found that promoting good hand hygiene helped control the spread of the disease. And given recent events, I think improved hygiene has never been more important and more critical. And by focusing efforts on water, sanitation, and hygiene um, and on that sector as a whole, we can help to solve not just COVID-19, um, but also future pandemics. Thank you so much. And Jack, how would you answer the same question? So I founded the World Toilet Organization in 2001. That's because that at that time, the subject of going to the toilet, shit, poop, pee, were considered taboo subject. And uh, 2.6 billion people don't have access to proper sanitation. This caused all kinds of problems. It, uh, when you don't have toilet, you defecate near the river and the water become contaminated and diarrhea kills 1.8 billion a uh, million people per year and this is even more than uh, the current COVID-19. COVID-19 has now heightened the awareness of hand washing and hygiene to a level never before experienced in mankind history and we hope that hereafter people will not stop washing their hands even after COVID is over because after SARS in 2003 were over, they stopped washing their hands. And I think we have to always prepare for the next 
disease X, pandemic X, that will happen because this kind of diseases, they mutate. So the World Toilet Organization took sanitation and decoupled it from the water uh, agenda so that people can talk about it. We use humor by calling ourselves the WTO, that sounds like the World Trade Organization, and the world media love it, calling us the other WTO, and suddenly sanitation took center stage. After 13 years of hard work, our founding day, 19th of November, is enshrined unanimously by 193 country members of the UN General Assembly as the official UN World Toilet Day. So in two months time, you will celebrate World Toilet Day 19 of November because every year we make policy changes and we solve this problem. When people don't have toilet, when girls go out to the bush, they get raped or molested and also peeping thumbs that reduces their privacy. When people don't have toilets, the flies spread the disease from the poop and go to the food and children die. So sanitation is so important and we have been working for the last 20 years since 2001 and we will continue serving everyone such that one day all people will have access to a proper clean toilet anytime and anywhere they go, not just at home, but at workplace, at transport center, at prayer center, recreational center, and everywhere you need to go, you need to go. Jack, thank you. And thank you for addressing the taboos that can be associated with this topic. Um, Sarah, I wonder if you could answer the question that we all uh, want to know through interdependence. What can an individual do to be of service in this solving this terribly big problem? Um, and with respect to our call on the G20 leaders, how can citizens of the world make their leaders see what, what others have talked about, that self-interest can be more widely defined? That's a great question, Annie. I think when we think about issues like water, access to water and, and toilets, um, we usually think of it in terms of it being a government, a government um, provided um, service. We think of it as a government issue, something that the government needs to be tackling when in fact, individuals and citizens themselves can take ownership of, of, of these issues. Um, we have just 10 years to go to deliver on the, global, on the global goals. And we can only do this by mobilizing not only government, but calling on people, calling on individuals, calling on ourselves to take ownership of some of these issues. Um, the UN is calling this decade the decade of action. And I think partnerships and corporations is key in helping to solve some of these issues. And my wish is that during this decade of action in, in order to accomplish the goal six, which is ensuring access to water and sanitation for all, we must make use of goal 19, goal 17, which is partnerships for the goals. That means partnering with civil society organizations, partnering with corporations and businesses, holding governments accountable to prioritize access to clean water and sanitation and hygiene. Um, like Jack said earlier, you know, the, the issue of sanitation affects not only our health, but also the ability for girls to attend school. Um, it's a safety issue, it's a health issue, it's an economic issue. And I think if we look at it um, from an economic standpoint, and, and how, for example, in a lot of African countries, a lot of African economies, the, um, the, the GDP of an entire country is affected by how much, access, how much access to clean water and sanitation they have. So we have to look at it in terms of an economic issue, a health issue, an education issue, and just a cross section of, of, um, of challenges that just solving this one problem can address. Thank you. 
I, I really appreciate how complex the issue is and it can be, uh, well, it can be about a network of people trying to solve the problem because it affects a network. Um, and Jack, I wonder if you could, you know, kind of delve a little bit more about some of the obstacles to solving this problem that aren't about money, that's really about the political will to do it or the cultural taboos that you talked about. Yes, I think that uh, when we say we hold the government accountable, it's a little bit uh, threatening for them. But actually, there's a lot of incentive that they can draw upon by building toilet because toilet is the cheapest medicine in the world. It's a preventive medicine. When you have proper hygiene and sanitation, then you save a huge chunk of money on your healthcare costs. So we have to approach sanitation as a whole of government calculation of budget. If you save the medical bills, people have toilet, are hygienic, they will earn money. And then they will be able to pay taxes, generate jobs, great economic activities. So a toilet prevent people from being sick, but also make them productive. Another one is that if we drive demand for sanitation and we make poop culture, pop culture, make music, make songs, make painting, make sculptures, talk about it, have fun, comics, what will happen is that the people realize that toilet is important and when the politician realize that they can win election by promising people toilet, then boom, you will have a lot of toilets built. Prime Minister well, Modi has built 110 million toilets last year. And this is because he realized that toilet is a vote winner. In Africa, in, in every way you can do it. In China, I, President Xi Jinping is also a toilet champion. So I, I, think can't, I can't top that, but I will say that we may be out of our, our section's time. I really appreciate your words of wisdom and your energy and your commitment. And I think we all agree that the G20 leaders have to listen to this message because we are about preventing the next pandemic and we are about the interdependence of all of these issues and all of our, our humanity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Annie.